Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to DNews Plus today. We have a very special episode coming at you. So far in this series, this is, by the way, episode five of five on formations. We've talked about formations of galaxies, universes, planets, and even ourselves. But today we're going to talk about how some of these things interact and form different things. I don't know how better to describe it, but we have one of our documentary producers, Will Poor, here with us today. Hello. Hello, Will. Welcome. Thank you for having me. So we got to go to Lowell Observatory. Yes. And talk to Dr. Michael West, Deputy Director of Science there, about telescopes and... Astronomy. And astronomy and, and just really awesome. And he told us uh, about this galactic formation that yes, is really, really cool. Really and weird one. Will, you, you looked into it for us. Yes, and one of the first things that we looked into was this thing that he mentioned in passing to us, which was the existence of cannibal galaxies, which, which is something that, that sounds, sounds crazy, crazy yeah. but it's real. It's also the way astronomers actually talk about these things in a very fun and descriptive and kind of goofy way, even as complicated as they are. Just listen, here is how Dr. West actually describes some of the galaxies that he's studying. Galaxies are very gregarious. They, where you find one galaxy, you, you always find others. But there's a few galaxies that seem to be isolated. They don't have any neighbors. And so they're either hermits or we think they're cannibals. That's just, did he just like describe galaxies as if they had personality traits? Cause he's like saying hermits and cannibals and you know, isolated, I guess you could say it's personality traits. Sure, but that's, I, I think that's just the, like, the colloquial way to think about it all. It's the way that sort of makes sense on a human scale. Right. Uh, which is awesome. And it's not that they're not going very deep into these things mathematically, but right. it's just what makes sense. I kind of love that he's personifying them because yeah. they do seem like they're doing things, even though there are these inanimate, giant, you know, literally galactic objects. But Let's break down a little bit about what he's talking about. There are a lot of galaxies in the universe, like a hundred billion or more galaxies. At least, no one really has any idea. Yeah, it's all estimates. Uh, we have ideas, but. Right, in terms of the specific number, nobody really knows. And some of them clump together in clusters, and that's like hundreds of galaxies and gases and dark matter and kind of a chunk, and they're held together by their gravity. And those galaxy clusters then attract more, forming chains called super clusters, and those are millions of light years across. And when you look sometimes out there, you don't often find galaxies by themselves. Right, most of the galaxies in the universe are tied up in all of those those structures that you talk about. But every now and again, they will come across one that is isolated, usually very large. And to scientists like Dr. West, this actually looks pretty suspicious. Uh, and the idea is that they probably did have neighbors once and it didn't end well for those neighbors, they all got eaten. Uh, you know, gravity pulls galaxies together and so a big galaxy can eat smaller galaxies. And so we think these giant galaxies grew to their enormous sizes by devouring all of their neighbors. Uh, you know, sort of a, it's a galactic feeding frenzy that would make Hannibal Lecter proud. So that's what I mean when I say fun, florid, descriptive language. Yeah. Hannibal Lecter, cannibals, yeah, all but sorts of fun stuff like that. As much as I love it, I just want to, because for the sake of the science, because I know the commenters will say otherwise, we'll get, Scary we'll commenters. get tweets and lovely stuff. Lovely commenters. They're, you're lovely. Wonderful you're all commenters. the best. Um, and I mean that sincerely. But they will say that cannibal is probably not the right term, or they'll Google that and they'll find out that there's actually a more official term. Right, and you will see references to galactic cannibalism, but the, the overarching term is galactic interaction. It just sounds boring. It sounds a little bit boring, but it's <laughs> accurate. Right. It's boring, accurate. <laughs> accurate, two and two together sometimes. But it basically just <laughs> means two galaxies that are close enough to each other for their gravitational fields to interact mm -hmm. and for the, the galactic structures themselves to start to interact. That can mean they just kind of pass by each other and change course. That could mean that they are, uh, that they kind of wing each other and some of the, like a spiral arm of one spiral galaxy can get ripped off. Um, that means that they can start to orbit each other closer and closer. Closer. It means that they can just completely smash into each other and form some other new crazy messy galaxy. I just want to remind us that we're talking about it kind of the same way that Dr. West is talking about it, as if these are in, as if these are single units. But they're actually collections of billions of stars and solar systems and all sorts of incredible stuff, all in one kind of chunk. Absolutely. So this is essentially billions of solar systems flying by billions of other solar systems and interacting with them, which yeah. is just freaking crazy. Yeah, and the idea that the universe is this big and yet this is happening all over the place 
is absolutely wild to me. And it is happening all over the right. place. Right, we've seen this happening a lot all over the place for sure. And we have so many pictures of all of these different galaxies doing all of these different things, and there are just so many galaxies out there, that we can take pictures of different ones with like the Hubble and see them tearing each other apart, flying through each other and cutting each other in half and eating each other up and turning totally. into a big blob and it's crazy. And the what's very useful about that is that these interactions, these galactic interactions, take Boring. millions and billions of years to actually right. run their course. So there's no way whatsoever that we could actually watch two galaxies interact with each other in real time. But going back to the fact that there are 100 billion of these out there or, or more, more uh, basically wherever you point the Hubble telescope in the sky, if you look long enough, you're going to find these a galaxy interacting galaxies doing and, something. Right. And the best part about that is that you get to see them at every possible stage of interaction. So you can actually find similarly sized galaxies at different stages and actually build a model of how an interaction like that would actually take place. Right. Yeah. And it's pretty incredible. And the funny thing is, we actually got snapshots of our galaxy doing this. Yes. Which so, is crazy. Uh, right. So this is my kind of favorite uh, twist from talking to Dr. West is that our galaxy, the Milky Way, is itself a cannibal galaxy, uh, which Dr. West talked about. I mean, the Milky Way has probably eaten multiple galaxies over its lifetime. Uh, in fact, it's, the Milky Way is currently eating uh, at least one or two smaller galaxies, and there's others on the menu for the future. Now, I don't know if you can hear it in his voice, but being in the room with him, he gets really excited, and he kind of like... He gets like, like giggly about yeah, it. Yeah, he which gets is, super giggly when he's talking about galaxies eating other galaxies. It's kind of crazy. Which to me just tells you that he's in the right profession. Like, right, you yeah. should be that excited <laughs> about whatever the heck you're talking about. Right, and, uh, and I think that's that's pretty great. I, I like talking to him. It was pretty fantastic. Uh, so what he was talking about uh, was the Sagittarius Dwarf Sephiroidal Galaxy, yeah. uh, which is a very small dwarf galaxy that is actually very close to ours, and we've been able to tell that it is in the process of interacting with the Milky Way. In fact, you can see from the star trail that it's left behind that it has made several passes around, kind of like circling the drain of the Milky Way. It's passed through the plane of the Milky Way several times and has left a trail of star systems behind. Right. Kind of like a comet uh, with a trail of dust and gas, except really really big and like entire star right. system is getting ripped off and just sort of like left and you can actually see that those this is how they were able to figure this out those star systems are moving in a way that other stars in the milky way Don't are not moving move. so they right. they're move they have a, a a peculiar motion to them but if you track that back to the motion of this dwarf galaxy this picture starts to emerge which seems actually pretty brutal if you think about it on the part of firstly it's the rough. Milky Way, you know, because that's kind of mean on a, if you want to personify it. But also, if you think about it, like, what if one of those star systems that's getting left behind or traded between galaxies yeah. has life in it? That is that a crazy thing to think crazy about. That would be crazy to think about. Like, oh, yeah, our star system, um, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, we were in uh, like Sagittarius uh, dwarf spheroidal galaxy. Yeah, we were in the Sagittarius dwarf spheroidal galaxy. But guys, uh, just... Like, Note, update your calendars. We've been traded. We're now uh, in the There's Milky Way in, in the Milky Way galaxy. It's nice. Yeah. It's a nice Milky Way galaxy. It's a fun thing to think about, uh, yeah. and there's someone should probably write a science fiction book about it. The 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 ang the weird thing about that though is that again, this is this takes millions and millions and millions of years to play out. So any civilization to actually uh, be affected by this would have to exist for millions and millions True. and millions True. of uh, years or billions. Uh, so they would have some time to to think about figure it. Figure things out. Right. If that they could update their, became an issue. their textbooks, it'd be okay. Yeah. Uh, but this is something, interestingly, that we are going to have to deal, that our solar system, at any rate, is going to have to deal with. Yeah, like you and me. People, not, not so, so much. much. Uh, but. What's going around is coming around, is what yeah. you're trying to say. What I'm trying to say is that this is going to be a thing for us yeah. uh, in in a, a wee four billion years. What's going around is, uh, is the Andromeda galaxy. Yeah, Dr. West. So in about four billion years, uh, the Milky Way and the Andromeda galaxy, they're on a collision course, that's really clear. Uh, and so we're gonna collide and eventually settle down into one big new larger galaxy. Andromeda is about 50% bigger than the Milky Way. So uh, it, yeah, it wins, I guess. 
So it, it wins. Payback's a bitch? I don't know. Yeah, but don't freak out, though, guys. No. There yeah. are a lot of reasons that this is not actually an issue for anybody right. or anybody's children or children's 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 or children's right. children's 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 are so far apart from one another, the distances we're talking about are absolutely staggeringly huge. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about two galaxies colliding, even if it is a dead-on collision, these aren't stars and star systems and planets smashing into each other. No. It's really just all of those intervening, all of those systems interacting with one another and pulling and tugging on each other with gravity. And the structures of the galaxy might get distorted or completely blown to smithereens. But the stars themselves, this is not, they just kind of pass through each other right, and rearrange yeah. their structures. And I'd like to think of it kind of like a, like a flock of birds or a swarm of, or a school of fish, rather. Absolutely. You know, they might merge, they might interact with each other in terms of their behavior, but right. at the end of the day, it either becomes one school of fish right. or one school of fish passes the other. Right, and so the, the shape of that school could be affected and the direction that it was headed and what individual fish are a part of what school might right. change. Right. But there aren't fish smacking into each other. Right. That would be hilarious if they did. That would be. It'd make but, a good video for the internet. Right, but that's not actually what's happening. Right. If anything, uh, what's cool is that there's so much extra gas and energy interacting that new stars actually form from this mm -hmm. process, and that's something that scientists have been able to observe. Uh, yeah. It's just due to all of that extra stuff interacting this is this can be a, a hotbed for new star formation when yeah. this happens so cannibal galaxies are super interesting and not only are they uh, kind of incredible to witness and the fact that you can witness them in the slowest of motions that you could imagine yeah. but they help with the formation of new things like new stars new Absolutely. galactic systems that are bigger or are smaller or are smeared or all sorts of cool really 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 cool stuff they react they stretch they squish and yep. as dr west says they also ripple really cool you know if you drop a rock into the water and you get the ripples moving outwards you see that in galaxies if a small galaxy falls into a bigger one because it's gravity pulled it in you get ripples occurring in the stars and everything it's just really spectacular I love astronomy astronomy is very cool I didn't really Astronomers are very cool I didn't really know that I loved it as much as I did well you just have to hang out with one I guess and then you find out how cool it is so big takeaway from this astronomers are cool right Mm, galactic interactions, a perfectly natural uh, process that aids with the formation and change in the universe and uh, the Milky Way is kind of a jerk and the Mercury is kind of a jerk uh, that's going to get his comeuppance at some point, so we should enjoy it while it lasts. Right, for the next so, four billion years Enjoy or so. the galaxy while it lasts. That's is, right. Really should be the takeaway for all the videos <laughs> in this series is just like, in, just enjoy it while it lasts. Right, true. If you guys liked uh, this episode, we can partner with Will and some of our other documentary producers. Like we said earlier, we got to go do this thing at Lowell Observatory, and that's where Will got to learn about all this stuff and share it with you guys and myself. We've read your comments, and um, some of you would love visuals and interviews and, and stuff like that. We want that too. Yeah. We really do, and we want to partner with Will and with our other documentary producers, but we need your help. So share this video. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Showing visuals is tricky because they're not free. We have to hire somebody who can help us out. and Or go if, to Arizona with a camera. Right, or fly to Arizona and, and take the video ourselves. So if you guys interact with us, kind of like galaxies interacting nah. with each other, then <clears throat> uh, sharing the show, subscribing to the show, then we'll be able to do more of this kind of stuff. So Absolutely. we really like to. it. Yeah. So thanks a lot, Will, for coming in and Thank sharing you. this with us. Thanks uh, for having if me. If people want to find out more, they can find you on Twitter. Yeah, at WPOR, W-P-O-O-R. Also find me on Twitter at Trace Dominguez. And thanks so much for tuning in. Thank you.